Welcome back to the boys at 161st Street, episode 207. Today is June 13th, and the Yankees have just swept the Cubs, and that's fun. I am out in LBI, so excuse my internet if it ever ends up breaking up, but I don't think it will. I think we're good. We're not in Vermont now. I'm, I'm the traveling, the sisterhood of the traveling Luke. <laughs> so You are uh, down the shore. As down the say. shore, as they do say. Um, but you did yeah, a good Yankees. job saving Luke there. He was laughing at his own joke alone. <laughs> <laughs> Murph saved you. Whatever, man. Uh, Yankees have been dope. That's cool. Yankees have, I mean, they're just, it's, what do we even say at this point? It's almost like rinse, repeat. And just, I mean, this whole season has just been continuing to be historic and they haven't slowed down. Just when you thought they were going to slow down a little bit, they just rattle off another what are they nine and one in their last 10 or just sweeping yeah. every team. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. How are we doing gentlemen before we get going and, uh, and kick it off here? I mean, it's hard to complain, right? I mean, 11 complain. game win streak, one loss, and then another four, four, four or five game win streak Some, right now. Something like that. Yeah. We, we've won like something ridiculous, like 14 out of 15 or something dumb like that. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a uh, it's a good time to be a Yankee fan. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I saw some stats too that were just like, uh, I'll pull it up. And Unless you're a dead spin writer, you shouldn't be he, excited about this team because here's the Yankees. A stat for you. Did you see that what while you're it? looking those up? Dead spin came out with an article. I mean, not that I'm you know dead spin's the <laughs> greatest thing on earth. I just think like it's hilarious that you can get paid to write an article like this in general. That Fucking the Yankees good. are the. Um, Green Bay Packers of the MLB and not to get your hopes up about this team. It was like, yeah, the Yankees have a reputation for dominating the regular season. We've won one AL East title in the last nine years, in case you were wondering. Um, it's like, yeah, the Yankees have a reputation for dominating the regular season and choking in the playoffs. It's like, when was the last time we truly choked in the playoffs other than 2019? Yeah. Like, all the other times were wild card teams that shouldn't even be there. Just weren't a good team. Yeah, yeah, like 2017, you could say, but you're playing the, you know, the Astros, who were very good, won the World Series, and they were cheating. Not that you know, I'm going to say that that cost them a World Series. I'm not pulling a Brian Cashman, but they were a better team anyway. So I mean, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think it's a little silly. I saw I saw one stat today or an article that was like breaking down like the Yankees' historic start f- through the first 60 games, and there's a list of teams who had how many wins do we have right now 40 something 44 it was like teams that have had at least 44 wins through the first 60 games of this season or 40 wins through the first 60 games of this season and every single one of those teams um made it to the championship game um big champ- game yeah championship series championship, yeah. i think championship was that the cbs earlier. one because i actually probably only have like, that one up I, right now i hate yeah. i hate stats like that tr- truthfully where it's like, oh, these all teams made it this far because of their record, and now the Yankees can too, but I thought it was pretty cool. No, I, I, mean, I like it, those. They make me happy. Yeah, it's not that crazy to talk about because, I mean, a team – it's different because it's like when you see a team that, you know, goes 15-0 and 0 in their last 15 or 15-1 and 1 in their last 15, and then that team ended up making it to the World Series 10 times out of 10, that makes no sense. But a team that – you don't just fluke into 44-16. and 16. Like, you're yeah. that good. And that's why that stat actually kind of bears some weight. I mean, it doesn't really, at the end of the day, when you think about it, because it doesn't really matter. Like, I guess that article was kind of alluding to from yeah. Deadspin, which I've yeah. never fucking heard of before. But it's just, you know, like I said, you don't fluke into 44 and 16. And more on that later, because I, I dove into the numbers, uh, not against the rest of the league, but just looking at, you know, why is this team so good as compared yeah as compared to last year to this point, because we've seemingly talked about it on this, this podcast, not seemingly we talked about it on this podcast that it kind of seems like we're just running the same thing back ahead of this season. We were all like, this team's kind of going to suck. And if you go to the, not kind of suck, but like kind of more of the same, because that's what they did a little bit, but you know, I, that's what I wanted to see. You know, we're watching the games and we see what's actually better, but 
I wanted to see tangibly what's better in each respect, like by the numbers. So yeah. more on that later, but yeah. Um, before we get into any crazy details about the Yankees, you know, we're all, we're all uh, enjoying watching so far. Everyone's enjoying the Yankees so far, but um, this episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. They are one of our new sponsors for the season so far, so um, really excited about that. If you go to our link in bio, link in the podcast description, you can uh, either download the Underdog Fantasy app or use their website version as well. Sign up and use our promo code, The161Boys, and you can get a $100 deposit match on your um, your first deposit. Um, we're going to be trying to do some cool contests and some daily fancy stuff in Underdog. We use it all the time. Um, it's our go-to place for daily fantasy sports. It's a blast in there. You can draft your own team. You compete against us. You compete against other Yankees fans, other people in our group. Um, it's a lot of fun. There's pick'em games. There's daily drafts. You can do rivals, a bunch of different game modes. Um, so yeah, go look, go uh, to Lincoln Bio, use our promo code one sixty one boys, get up to hundred dollars in Murph's cash. You could also audio, pick. Uh, those in the audio only, Murph winked. That yeah, that's cool. Now, Notice. if you picked, you picked uh, Matt Carpenter to hit some some bombs, Daily Fantasy underdog, you would have won some cashish. Or if, you live, point, or if you live bet hey, Kyle Higashioka did a home run right after he had the first one, like I told everybody in our group chat too, he did. And I granted, know. it was off a 35-mile-per-hour fastball from Schwindel, whatever the Frank fuck his name Schwindel. is. Home run's a home <laughs> yeah. run, baby. Slowest ball ever hit for a home run. Is it actually? Yeah. 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 So That was wild. Like, let's talk about that for a quick second there because – it's kind of that was kind of fucked up like there's no need we're up 16 runs i know there's no mercy rule in baseball but like <laughs> i know higgy what, what do you want him to do yeah, what are you supposed no to no do there's that, nothing yeah. i want him to do oh, but that's and such I'm, not, a loser. I'm not asking that's him to change his tune i'm just saying it's it just kind of <laughs> like it's like anybody needed that i know that was gonna say like higgy's kind of just like getting his stroke back and like stat padding a little bit and that if anybody had helped to help chandler because that's two now on the on the yep. To 23 run, more run for 25 and i think i think he's he gonna hit it he's gonna hit yeah, six I mean, more this week the live odds for his second home run were probably minus 250 that's what i was gonna say time. you were saying you're gonna <laughs> win a bunch of money on matt carpenter hitting home runs i mean fuck at this point he's got to be like minus 500 to hit a home run no we talk about people like what's he got eight hits stanton. and six are home runs yeah we talk about people like stanton who like when he's hot bet the shit out of him just bet him every single game to hit home run Obviously, we think Carpenter is becoming that, but Higgy is the epitome of that in within a game, not even just like that week. It's like pick him to hit another home run as soon as he hits one, and he did it in this spot. He's gonna if I'm if I'm picking anybody like Luke's lock of the day for tomorrow because we don't have a game today. Um, I mean, you have to just throw your mortgage on Higgy to get a home run tomorrow. If there wasn't a, if there wasn't a rest day in between, I definitely would have done that. But I think this rest is gonna fuck him up. I think you should never bet. Like, if you just do the, you know, whatever, like, Fandle has the daily dinger thing or Tuesday dingers or whatever, if you're just betting a player to hit a home run, I think it's stupid to ever bet Kyle Higashioka to only hit one. Just always bet him in pairs. <laughs> yeah. It's not worth the money. That'd like, be a funny stat to look at, like, how many of his home runs came on the same day. He's got four multi-home run games in his career. That's all I know. And what's he got for his career in terms of home runs? <laughs> because also some of the <laughs> some of the multi home run days are three home runs though. He doesn't just do it twice. He does I it. Know. And I'm actually shocked in an 18 run outing that he only had two home runs in that. Him and Matt because Carpenter. Dude, Matt Carpenter is a, dude. He's fucking, awesome. He's the best, I love dude. Matt Carpenter. Dude, uh, Matt, not, uh, Matt not, Carpenter. A few stats on him, real quick, because I just looked this up what yesterday and. It's, in 130 games last year with St. Louis, he had three home runs. And in 10 games with the Yankees, he has six <laughs> this year. And it's just absolutely ridiculous that he's – I don't know. I, more on, I, have, I have a rounding third about him, but I won't, I won't spoil that yet. But it's just crazy that – I mean, he did have statistically one of the worst offensive years in uh, – I think it he was the worst. He did have the worst, the worst yes, year. I, I know you were going to – yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the worst ever. He's got a 325 WRC plus right now, which was, leads the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, it, it's leading Judge by 115. So also he was due the, um, for some positive regression. But <laughs> also, the um, his interview after the game was like big locker room talk. 
for those of you who didn't see it, he was just like preaching about how like this team's different. You know, the clubhouse is great. One of the best like clubhouse clubhouse has been around in general, and this guy's been around the block. You know, you don't, you don't thirty six years old. You don't have a mustache like that and not seen some shit. Yeah. Yeah, yep. you've seen it all. You've seen it all. Yeah. Dude looks like it looks like a World War Two airplane mechanic. He's he, been he's been in some clubhouses before. Pretty sure he was in Top Gun. I was gonna say I was just gonna say if this happened, you know, last year while they're maybe filming Top Gun, throw him in for a cameo. <laughs> Put him in the background. While, while Not even a cameo. Well he's DFA'd. Yeah. <laughs> like a DFA <laughs> just like vacation just like makes a cameo in Top Gun. What would his call sign be? Uh that's a good one. I have no fucking clue. Um, oh, man. Bomb. I feel like just just nice, simple bomber. Bomber? The old Yanks reference. I don't know. That's the first one I could think of. I like bomber. My head. I was going to think of something along the lines of, like, uh, some of the blue bloods, because like, he was like a Tom Selleck mustache. I was going to say something that probably isn't good to say, so I'm going to keep it to myself. Like sheriff? Yeah, that's a good idea. Sheriff, yeah. I like Sheriff. It's a PG Trooper. Show. Trooper. It's a kid. It's a kid show. Trooper. Trooper. Yeah, it sounds like a like the meaning. Yeah, a little bit. Well, anyway. Let's move on. Yeah. Let's <laughs> just name out a bunch <laughs> of random words of people with mustaches. That had potential. We kind of that had potential. Yeah, we, yeah. If you had told we me that, put like a poll. Let's put a poll up. You win some, you lose some, and then, you know. But one last thing on on Carpenter before we move on to to rounding third is that he had five plus homers in his first ten games as a Yankee. He is one of four people to do that. I don't even. I mean, only had, one was six. H- Higgy's only one was man. six. No, Eric no. Hinsky in twin, 2009, Shelly Duncan 2007, and Barry Foote in 1981. Um, Not the best company. No, Whoa. and I, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Not a big Barry Foote fan. <laughs> I, I actually uh, big full disclosure. I have no idea who that is. I I was shocked you, by that. Any of you do. I'm shocked by that because I figured that if I like listed Murph's an old soul for those who don't know. Um, I figured when I was, cause I don't know who Barry foot is, nor do I know who Eric Kinski is. Honestly. Did and you I, say Shelly Duncan? Or did Shelly Matthews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Dave Matthews until, until today. Dave Matthews is great, by the way, for anybody who, who <laughs> yeah, has, yeah. Who is, that's no. awesome, man. Anybody, Charlotte anybody Rella anybody also thinks, in 2012. Yeah. He also thinks boys to men is great. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, big up and coming bad boys to bed. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to make fun of you for that, Rella, because nobody deserves to be made fun of for liking the Dave Matthews band, and they often are. <laughs> are they? Oh yeah. yeah. Why? He, he's like widely. He's like one of the most disliked. Is he like Nickelback? Popular artists? No, kind of. Not. Yeah. Not as bad, <laughs> no, but like no, kind no. of. Nickelback. A lot of people <laughs> really don't like Dave Matthews band. I personally am a huge Dave Matthews. It's a big fan, controversy. But... There's controversy. Nickelback gets dragged through. Well, they everything. suck. That's why. I, they, I, I would I, say Dave Matthews, yeah. in terms of hate versus deserved hate, <laughs> Dave Matthews yeah. gets It's like the, the Vicky Mendoza it. like, thing. You know, it's like, I, I also kind of like Nickelback. Like, don't think they should be getting <laughs> shit on either. But I, I like, like Dave you know. Matthews' band is fantastic. And yes, but Nickelback deserves more hate than, than Dave yes, Matthews. Yes, exactly. I, I don't. I don't agree. Let's move on. I, I, I think that uh, one thing that I thought was very cool, other than Dave Matthews' band today and yesterday, was after Higgy hit his two home runs, or I don't know which one it was after, but it's just kind of a, a like an indication of how great this team is and specifically how awesome Jose Trevino is after he goes up to him and he just he hugs him and like they they have a moment. And, I, and we find out after the game, too, that uh, – Trevino is actually the one that gave him like a tip that ended up. It was before his first home run. Before his first home run, he gave him a tip. But I don't know what it was. was I think cool. it was something to fix in his at bat or his swing or something. It was, yeah. Or yeah, yeah. told him and... told him to sit on the high thirty five mile an hour. <laughs> 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 it was for the that really one. was the difference. It was for the first one, he and for the it. first one, he told him something, and he ended up hitting the home run. So kudos to him. But then after that, at some point. He was like hugging him. They had like a little moment, and it's like you could he could have easily and I didn't expect them to have any tension because they are kind of in a position battle. But the two guys, Jose Trevino and Higgy, are like neither of which think that they're not starters. So like they kind of both know the assignment that they have, but like they could easily have tension among each other, and they don't. And quite the opposite, they lean into yeah. being boys, and just I think that's just a indication of like the locker room and how everything is like i mean jose trevino confirmed locker room guy murph 
Oh, but yeah. when you look that. around the entire league, I mean, that entire uh, like team, it's just this whole team. And I think that's what Matt Carpenter was talking about. I know that's what like, everybody's been talking about. Rizzo has been talking about it. He said something about how this, this team's different. And I think that's, you know, stats aside, all that stuff, that's fine. Like you could play well on the field, but this team just like, there's also, when you look back to other things too, within the locker room, like Chapman, when he got that championship belt, I know we made fun of that at first, but like, that's just everybody sticking together. Did Chapman deserve the championship belt? Fucking no, he didn't. He sucked yeah. in the old blue two saves in a row, but they <laughs> gave it to him to like pump his tires a little bit, say like, Hey, we're behind you, man. And at the time we were like, ah, oh, whatever. That means nothing. But like now when you see it, in exhibit A, B, C, and D, like this team just loves each other. Like they're different. It's yeah. going to absolutely crush me if Stop Jose <laughs> if Jose Trevino go, comes back down to earth to like just a like backup catcher that's good at defense. Because he's you, just, even if he does though, it's I, fine. well, it's just going to be sad because he's so likable and he's having like just like I mean he had the walk off hit the other night pinch hit you know, was it like first pitch just roped it single boom walk off after. They intentionally walked Aaron Hicks, and then <laughs> <laughs> you can't That's gotta say with a be straight first face. One, right? I mean, at least in the last like three years, but I don't know. I mean, the, all this stuff with Derek Jeter, you know, it's like his Great life, time. his idol, and he's meeting him, and every, I don't know. He's just like literally a ten-year-old kid playing for the Yankees right now. And he's so excited, and I don't know if, if he ever comes back down to earth. I'm gonna be very sad. Yeah. Did you also see that his home run, his walk off home run came on the first one, came on his father's birthday, and this next one that he had to walk off, which we were behind home plate for, which was a great time, um, but that was on his son's birthday. Yeah, it was just wild. any full, big full family event. He, yeah, he'll, he's, he's got to be playing. He's got to be, be pinch yeah, hitting. Got to be playing. If he's in the pinch hit option and it's his wife's cousin's dog's birthday, just put put Jose Trevino <laughs> out there because he's gonna walk it off. I mean, a little, a little fun stat for just uh, the season so far. Yankees lead the MLB with seven walk-offs so far. Boom. They're most through 58 games since 1943, which was a long time ago. For those fun of you fact, don't know. yes, that was a long time fun ago. Fun fact, 1943 I've got another, was a long time ago. I meant to mention this earlier, but another little fun season stat for you. The Yankees are the only team with under 20 losses. So the good. next, the Mets have 22 and they have the second least losses and we have 16. It's not so bad. like, it's not, not only do we have the best record in baseball, but at least right now it's by a pretty substantial margin. Also just kind of to jump back over to Luke talking about how, how this locker room is different and everything. This new like budding romance between Rizzo and judge coined by somebody on Twitter. I don't remember their name. So sorry. Jizzo is my new favorite thing of all time. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. That can't be it. That can't be true. That's, I mean, it was some random guy. It was like hashtag Jizzo. It was just a compilation <laughs> of like Rizzo and Judge like hugging each other. And no. like, like the other night on the walk off, you saw Rizzo jump out or Judge, which, whichever one came first. And they were like about to run and they waited, like helped the other one over the fence, like hugged and then ran to the plate. They're well, literally like doubting, stepbrothers I'm not right now. Doubting the friendship. I'm de- <laughs> I'm no, no, no. I just, it's like fucking name. Dale and Brennan right now. They're just <laughs> absolutely loving it, and I, I'm all here for it. Yeah. yeah well, even like, um, not even not Judge and Rizzo, but um, you mean Jizzo? I mean, I don't mean Jizzo, but um, when Higgy hit the home run, then the, he had the silent treatment in the the dugout. I, That's I, another I, thing. I too. love when they do that. They I love when they did to Gallo, who's like yeah. one of the. You know, say what you want, but he's widely regarded as one of the better power hitters in the game yeah. and has been for a while. Hit his first home run, and they just fucking gave him the silent treatment. That's so, so funny. funny. Well, like, that's, just, that's just such a great thing, too, because... He'll never get old. But that even the Higgy thing, they're making light of, like, uh, you were, hey, man, you were struggling, and we're here for... Like, we're celebrating with you. I know, yeah. like, you. that's, like, a big thing when you get that monkey off your back. And, yeah, he had a 35-mile-per-hour home run after that, but he's still, he's still hitting the ball, and I guarantee that he will be hitting better because, and and in large part due to the guys getting his back, because if, you know, other people look at him and like, dude, why are you sucking? Like, and are in a toxic locker room, he's not going to bounce back in the way he is. And he's probably not going to get the same run. He's not going to be as confident in himself. And like, if other people believe in you, you're going to do better. It's just a fact. So, I mean, that bleeds true with, I'm sure even how a guy that is just quite possibly he's that good, like, Aaron Judge, I'm sure, is playing at a higher level because of this, even though he, he would be playing well. But, like, I guarantee 
because of the locker room, because of Jizzo, he's, he's, play, <laughs> he's playing better than he would have otherwise. And I think that bleeds through with every single person in this lineup. And I think that's why I don't want to like understate how good the chemistry is and how much that means to a team like this. And that's what Rizzo was talking about. He's saying like, this is the feeling I had on that 2016 team when I won the world series like this, we, we felt like a tight knit group and any stat and any, I feel like every podcast we've been talking about recently has been like, Oh, listen to this historic pacing and this historic stat. And we can make that a recurring segment because they're going to keep on coming. But the biggest thing to me, other than all that is the fact that this team likes each other and they, they like each other the way they do. And they're having fun. We haven't had seen a Yankees team have fun like this in a long time. <clears throat> and it's, it's very refreshing to see. And it's, it's when you pair that with historic numbers and being on pace for 120 wins and judges on pace for 67 home runs and like all this stuff that you see judges name in the same sentence as Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth, and this, the Yankees are in the same sentence as the 20, whatever, 20, 2006 Mariners. Is that what the team was? 2001. 2001. 2001. Uh, yeah. It just, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts when you see all that stuff. And gives me shades I, I of the thumbs down 2017 team, but mm. even more so, yeah. like way more than that, with an actual like roster that can win, you know, yeah. like that 2017. Yeah. It was like, all right, they're like the Rangers ever since the it was house wild card. Yeah. yeah, it's both, and that's what's different this year. I completely agree. Yeah, you guys want to get into rounding third? Sure, let's do it. Yeah, um, all right, rounding third brought to you by Tick Pick. Um, Tickpick is the best place to get tickets. Uh, we just went to a game literally on Friday, and we bought our tickets on Tickpick. There is no fees on Tickpick. Um, what you see is what you get, damn it. What you see is what you get. Wow. No hidden fees. All right. You believe that, Murph? I believe that. I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've been on a few apps recently, and then I check out. Cough, stub I hub. Get, I get <clears throat> cough game time. I get to the, uh, the checkout place. And it was like forty, fifty dollars of fees on there. No, no way. Anyway, no way, not me. Not me with TickPick. <laughs> you can download TickPick app. You can go to their website. Do whatever you want. Use code one sixty one for ten dollars off your first order for first time users. Um, yeah, I mean TickPick is the way to go. Best tickets, best price. Sounds like double free money to me. Damn it, you're saving on fees and getting ten dollars off. It ten dollars seems like a no brainer. Ten dollars of our money off. And. Mm. Chandler, not the kind of free money that you're money. talking about when you're saying Brooks kept go to win. Well, that's yeah, because that's just absolutely if, like guaranteed. actual free money. No, actually, this is actual free money. This is not, you know, the scheme that you run with Brooks well, Kepka. I don't think it's a scheme. Wish I could go get some uh, no fee tickets to the U.S. Open. That'd be that'd be ideal. I know a place you can go get them. I do too. I wish I could go though. Uh -huh. Where even is it? It's in Boston. Boston. No way. We could go. We could go. What are you doing Friday? Spontaneous trip. I, I. Don't know if you're being serious or not, I, I'm but I'm kind of being serious. We'll, we'll talk after the show. Okay. But anyway, before we, we get into rounding, give me five minutes of your time. Later. If we go, we'll get them on tick tick. <laughs> <laughs> on, on tick tick. Before we get in, tick -tack. before we get in rounding third, um, go go buy go buy your tickets on tick tick. Before we get in rounding third, <laughs> I, we didn't we didn't talk about Clint Frazier yet, and I want to address that. Oh uh, yeah. And I guess I guess I can formulate it into a different rounding third. Is that Clint Frazier is a bitch, and here's how I'm going to prove it. <laughs> um, uh, and for those tuning in for the first time, rounding third is a is a segment where we just buy or sell. Basically, we're going to bring takes, and they're going to call us safer out. They being everybody else on the podcast when you bring your rounding third, and then yeah, it's a lot of fun. And then we're going to take your rounding thirds that we asked for online, and we will buy or sell those also. But Clint Frazier is a bitch, and here's why. Um, <laughs> he they he, there was that quote in the article that was like Yankees made me feel like a cookie cutter version of myself, and then he proceeded to get cut by the Cubs, which is which is really funny. Forty five minutes later. I don't, was this, so was this article was, and obviously this was, the article was written, but like also the excerpts from this article and like were, were before he got cut, obviously. So it's just funnier that way. And I'm not rooting for him to suck, but like when you, we also loved Glenn Frazier too, but when you say. That we just we, constantly the shit talk the Yankees all day, every day and blame them for that's why you're suck. so shitty. Then. And then you just. And then you right after that get cut by a team that we just hung 18 on in one game. It's not, not right. the best time. It's honestly, I'm actually very shocked that he got cut. I'm he, not. I know he, he was hitting 200. I know he wasn't hitting well, but like the Cubs aren't good. So they've be, got some young guys that them. they want to put. And like, and Suzuki's on the IL too. So it's not like 
yeah, he, he, he could have been gone before that too, but he had plenty of opportunity to be good with the Cubs and he just wasn't. But they were starting him every day, right? Until he got oh, hurt. Then he missed while, like two yeah. months. Oh, shocker. Clint got hurt. Can we go ahead and while we're here, just finish out one big just romping of the Cubs and how much they fucking suck in general. Uh, their social media team, Yankees fans think everything is a home run after Judge hit the second pitch he saw 400 feet. Then Stanton had a borderline home run rob. They tweeted that after that tweet. In the next, uh, let's see, 17 innings, less than two games, they gave up 25 runs, were outscored 25-4, to four, and had 10 home runs hit against them. So, haha, fuck you, Cubs. Also, on that note, while it was 9-1, to one, did you see or hear the announcers talking and they were just like, basically complaining about how all Yankees fans are bandwagon fans and if they weren't good, the seats would be empty. Well, he was alluding to the, on the 2009 podcast. on the, yeah, on 2009, like, okay, like, man, last like, time we were here, rats yeah. are old. like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I mean, Basically. that also, that also could be a factor of, it's just, I have many bones to pick with that because that could be a factor just dumb. of, of just baseball not being as popular as, as it is today. And like, it's just many things. It's just dumb. It's just, Throwing just grasping at straws because you're losing, yeah, pretty handedly, yeah. Nine All right, so who wants to do the first rounding third, other than the first real rounding oh. third? Because Clint's a bitch. Obviously, you guys are all buying that. Rally, mm, you uh, yeah. just you tipped your yeah. hand a little bit to the. Oh, I'll I'll we'll do the let's finish up with Clint first. Well, no, oh, we're done. Done. Oh, yeah, we're done. I just think it was hilarious. Okay. Like it could not have been better timing. Yeah, That's no. all I'm gonna say. Um. You want to go first, Rell, since you already... I did tip my hand, yeah, Murph. So you were alluding to the, the yeah. Carpenter. Mine yeah. mine was also Carpenter-related is all. Okay. Maybe so you guys my... could tag team one? I, I'm assuming you it's could probably one? pretty similar. Oh, that's... <laughs> you want to go one with me, Murph? You, I want you to say yours, and I'll say mine, and then we'll address. Okay, well, mine is that I think Matt Carpenter is going to have, like, uh, a Greg Bird-esque playoff moment. For the Yankees, and I, I just think, and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that he's gonna have like staying power, and he's gonna be just, he's gonna go continue playing like this, hit six home runs every three games or ten games on the major league roster, but, and I'm not even gonna say that he's gonna play regularly. He's probably not. He's probably not gonna play much for the team. He's he's probably gonna play ten games. He's been up for what? How many games have we played so far? Sixty. Like, Sixty. And yeah, he's played ten of them. I mean, granted, he hasn't been up on the roster for that long, but he's probably playing every other game, if not less. So, I, and there's not really much of an explanation for this that's going to tell you because I can't really prove anything to you to tell you that the scrappy 36 year old veteran is going to just randomly get it done. But I just have that feeling that he's going to be the guy to just have a big series. And I guess here's one thing that I can prove I looked at his playoff numbers, and it, there's nothing really crazy when, I, when you look at all of his playoff numbers. But he has had series, specific like individual series in the, in the NLCS and beyond where he's batted like 500 for it. And that's all I'm saying. I'm saying not for the whole playoffs, but for one particular series, I'm asking you guys, can you envision him being that Greg Bird kind of guy in the Indian series where he just absolutely goes off for an entire series or even just one big moment like Greg Bird had that home run. Like Raul Abanez. And like Raul Abanez. Yeah. Or, or even – maybe not even an entire series. I'm just saying he's going to do something ridiculous. And I guess there's – He's going to hit a pinch hit like game-tying home. That's going to be the moment that we all know that this team's like destined for greatness. It's going to be like game two of the ALCS. Like lost game one. And then game two, we're down like two nothing in the eighth against the Astros, and we're all just like, "Oh fuck, here we go again." And then big bad Matt Carpenter comes in and gives the team the lead or something. That's that's what it's gonna be. And that's then, that's gonna, gonna be the turning point in the whole postseason. Yeah. And then we're gonna go yeah. win the World Series. I, I, it's pretty much exactly what mine was. I'll really? say that, but yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't, I wasn't gonna compare it to Greg Bird. I didn't, that didn't pop into my head, but very gonna like, you know. Like Greg Bird, there. Greg Bird sucks. I'm just saying, like the right, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, I was I was gonna say that he's gonna come in in some big spot in the playoffs and turn the tides. That was that was the way I was mm. gonna phrase it. Whether how was it how was my scenario that I threw out there? Could you see that? I was. That's what I had in mind. Yeah, yeah. and I was gonna say something similar. Whether I mean, easily we could say yeah, it'll be a home run just because of how he's been playing now. But even like 
you know, a late game walk that turns into, you know, a walk off or a tie game, you know, something like that. Maybe it's not a home run, but just in general, I feel like he's going to be on the playoff roster and he's going to have just a veteran at bat and yeah. whatever comes from that, whatever. I, I just feel like we're going to be happy to have him basically in the playoffs. That's more what I'm saying. And this take is less of like a, a joke and, and less of a, just me speculating that, oh, yeah, he's going to get a big home run. I, I'm more so saying that, yes, I'm going to, I think I can see that. But obviously, that means nothing. That's just saying, like, he's, I think he's going to hit a big home run. But it's more of the fact that I think that he is one going to make the, play, the playoff roster. Granted, it's ex- ex- expanded, but I think he'll make the playoff roster. And I think that that's more so what I'm speaking to is how important he potentially could be to this team. Is that yeah? Judge is going to be on the roster. Judge is going to hopefully go off and do his thing that he's doing right now. Stanton's going to be there. You know, hopefully a guy like Trevino stays healthy and stays like he continues to do well. But like the guy that you wouldn't expect if that guy is hitting. We talk all the time about X factors and stuff like that in the season. And like the guy at the bottom of the barrel or the 26 plus man on the roster, if that guy is doing things like Matt Carpenter is doing. And then combine that with the fact that he's 36 years old. I kind of joked about it before, but he's a 30. He's been there. He's done that. He's a guy like Donaldson. I was talking about before. Who another potential rounding third is? I I, I want him. I, I'm starting to become a lot more confident with Donaldson in the box when the game's on the line, and that very much com, compa- compares to what I'm saying to with Carpenter. Is that like he is a scrappy vet? He's been there. He's done that. He's no moment can potentially. I'm not saying this right now, but like. I feel like with a guy like that, no moment can really be too big for you because you're not going to get nervous. Like you're, you're, you've, you've done it all. Like you, and Carpenter is a professional hitter. His career WRC plus is like 130. I was looking at it before. He's like, I don't need to tell you that Matt Carpenter was, has been a good player in this league. I'm just saying that I think guys like that are that, that is the X factor on this team when it comes to winning a world series, I think. And the fact that we have guys like that who will just do their role is, is just, crazy important and also like i said the leadership of a guy who's 36 plus who's older for some of these younger guys like you know glaber who is at times can be a head case and you can tell glaber like hey listen man there's no name on the back of that jersey brother yeah <laughs> i um i feel like that like when we make when we make the playoffs he'll have like if he gets consistent playing time i think he'll have like a He'll win like an MVP of the series, kind of like a, like a randomly like that would be like, cool. Randomly like like Steve Pierce. Like Steve Pierce. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Like he Steve was Pierce. World Series MVP. I know. I know he was. I know he was. Yeah. But like that's what's gonna be. It's gonna be like this random guy on the team who just like goes off during the series and is like the series MVP. I could see it. So like I'm like Matsui a little bit even like you know Matsui, when he won yeah. in 09, he wasn't supposed to be the guy that was gonna win World yeah. Series MVP. Yeah, but yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll be buying. From, from, Not that yeah. that's what Carpenter's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy that. I hope so. Chan- that would be cool. Can I pivot? Chan- right, can I pivot right now into that into that conversation? Now that I opened it a little bit, which the, Don- the Donaldson thing. Do you guys feel that same thing with Donaldson being up at the plate? I know Chandler, you've had your your qualms with him, and but I, I was talking about this with you before too. I, I think you kind of feel the same. Is that like he's a professional hitter? He's been there. Yeah. He's done that. He like you say what you want about who the what he's what he like he I don't know who he is or whatever the fuck he no, did with just, the, the suspension and all that stuff. But like I don't care he, about that. He's just like, I know, like just, I'm talking like on the field. He just like he has been. He's nothing like special so far. But I do would know what you're saying is that he does look like when the game's on the line, especially the other night, and it doesn't show up on the stat sheet because I know what you're talking about in this conversation we had at the game when Trevino walked it off. Donaldson hit two balls. He hit one that was an absolute fucking missile in the gap, and it just happened to land in somebody's glove. And then he hit another one that was a super high, long, you know, fly balls fly out right like six inches from the wall. Like on the warning track, almost was a home run. Not should have been a home run, but it was close to being a walk-off home run. I know what you're saying. He had the walk-off sack fly. He had the walk-off on opening day. It seems like in those situations, at the bare minimum, he's putting the ball in play and he's putting the other good at bats, which is something that you know, like you said, you get out of a veteran, you get out of somebody who's been there, done that. And I, in that, in that regard, I do feel pretty, pretty confident with him in a big spot most of yeah. the time. Like I'm just saying, like he 
say what you want about his consistent performance throughout an entire season, and that may still come too. Uh, I think I think he will be very productive for us. He was last year, but like in a situation like that, he knows what to do with the ball. He doesn't just press and say like I want to get the home walk off home run right here. Like you see yeah. it, and that's why I'm more so impressed with that that sack fly because like he just he will he'll take what the pitcher gives him, which is how you are good and how you are good in a situation like that. And that's why we praise Judge so much is that Judge doesn't just go for the home run. He takes. He battled that at bat too, right? If exactly. I'm not mistaken, he yeah, he saw some pitches, battle. fouled some off. That's what you see with guys like Brett Gardner, who's been shitty, but like he'll battle because he's an old scrappy vet. Like, all right, people, Brett Gardner, I don't know what he's doing right now. He's probably outside Yankee Stadium or Steinbrenner, hoping for an open tree out. But that's what you get out of a guy like that. And I and I, I I feel confident when he's in the box if the game's on the line over some other guys who made like who are better performance wise and will have better stats over an entire year long season. I just think that that's a guy who I, I want in the box and I'll take him over a guy like potentially Carpenter, who I think has his years, best years are behind him. I think Donaldson may be the best of both worlds when it comes to that. Like, and and maybe, yeah. maybe he also has one of those crazy series of crazier moments because of that same reason. I would put Donaldson right in the thick of, I mean, you have the, everybody wants Aaron judge. Like that is, there's no other choice for number one. I don't care what you said that like they right now, as it sits today on June 13th, Aaron judge is the best player player in baseball right now. You obviously want him up. Then there's that group of guys where they could go either way. You know, Glaber obviously has the history of doing it. And then you've got guys like Rizzo Stanton and Donaldson. And I kind of lumped those together right there as that, if any of those guys are up, I'm not, you know, I'm still confident in it. So I don't know. All right. That's enough nonsense about the old geezers on the squad. Damon, what's your running third? Uh, yeah. So I didn't have a ton of time to come up with a running third. Uh, had a little busy day. <laughs> to, oh, what a great we'll start to this. Set up the am pod. I, let's try to set up the podcast. Let's try Color to me shocked. Out. Try to make sure we hide all our things together. We had two remote people today. So I was a one man show setting it all up. Um, anyway. One and a half. Yeah, I mean, I had it all set up, but I got <laughs> not <laughs> my not my stuff or my camera. Not, not your personal microphone. You're right. Thank you. Um, anyway, I think it's a cool conversation to have at least. I don't know if this is like a rounding third, but more of just like a. Oh, you have something. Yeah, I have something. Yeah. Um, because we have, we have like this historical run differential that we to start the season so far. Um. I don't know. Like, it, like, if you have a run, dif- r- run differential right now, are you on pace to have a certain run, dif- run differential? Like, what are you talking about? I guess. Like, I mean, if I, like, let's say the Yankees run, the Yankees have like yes, a one twenty-seven. Technically, you times this by three. Yes. Technically, right? We're on pace to continue to because you have to just assume we would do the same. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. Murphy, wait a minute. Say? Well, I was just gonna say, I like, yes, but. No, shaky, because yes. it it's like it's a it's more of a ratio. So like if you divide, it's not a how ratio. many it, it it but like kind we're, of we're technically adding I to mean, this run differential at a pace of however many per game, which got us to this point. Which means right, like, it's gonna that's, continue yeah, to that's what I mean. It's like a snowball. It's we're, it's we're, gonna yeah. But I mean got, that ratio is gonna end point. up being the same. It's thing. not a ratio. No, it's not. So I'm saying if that's the ratio, so I'm, I'm on your side, if you, Luke. No, no, but it's I'm not. Say, it's we're a, all yes, the same. Side. I know what you're saying. I, <laughs> if I we're making, if saying... we make a ratio based on how many <laughs> runs scored versus <laughs> runs allowed, and then yes. translate that into a full season, yes. then yes, that when was. You said ratio. Same. I got confused because ratio indicates. No, well, you didn't let me finish. Below one. <laughs> I mean, if you ended up making it, would literally come out to the same thing as if you just. Yes. All right. Anyway, <laughs> any hoozy. Um Around three hundred, we're on pace for yes. Well, a little more than that. Three hundred three. Yeah. I said around. No, we're, <laughs> our current's like 127, I thought. No, it's 101. No, it's not. I thought I saw 114 before. Maybe this it was weekend. 101 before yesterday. But it was 114 before winning by. It's 127. Yeah, it's 127. So I'm right. Wow. Yeah, Shocker. Right. Shocker. I'm right. All right. So anyway, if you take that run differential, and let's just say that if you if we're on pace for whatever, we're on pace for 381, hypothetically, if that's how math works and that's how this ratio works. <laughs> We would we would have the third highest run differential of all time if we ended the season that way. That would be Who cool. Had, yeah, I thought that's pretty cool. The nineteen thirty nine Yankees and the eight 
1884 fucking mar- maroons. This that doesn't count, right? Baseball doesn't, doesn't count. Didn't happen before like that doesn't count. They had a four. They had a 458 run differential. That doesn't count. With like three total teams. Babe Ruth wasn't good, and that doesn't count. That, no, that, no, no, no. That's are the two no. things that I will die on. You're trying to work yeah, that yeah, into every episode now. <clears throat> Aside the besides from the 1939 Yankees, 1927 Yankees, those are the next two, and then there was a bunch of teams that just didn't exist, and then. We have the there's 19... 50, there's 50 pounds of piles of shit. And then... Yo, there's, like, there's, there's a bunch of teams in the 1800s. And then there's 1936 Yankees, 1902 Pirates. Like, you don't really get to a real, like, I'll say modern day team, for lack of better words, until, like, the 1998 Yankees with, here's 30, my, with 309. Here's my rule of thumb. If you were still dying from the flu at that, <laughs> at that time or the common cold, those, those stats don't count. So let's just say I feel like that's a generally good rule of thumb, <laughs> which I, I guess I, if if we're going by that metric, then I guess Babe Ruth the stats count. So I may have just contradicted myself, but the stat applies to the 1800s for sure. I think we can all agree that the stat doesn't apply to the 1800s. Does not apply. So yeah, I'd say you know. Anyway, I thought it was a cool stat. Um, 19. They're all Yankees teams, which is funny. Um, but I think that we have a good chance to, uh, to, to break in, break into that category. That'd be pretty cool. I'd say my hot take, though, is that we finish in, you know, we finish with 350. Was that just your way to, to introduce that stat? That was, yeah. Did you, you know look up really anything like, recent years, like leaders or whatever, to what that would right, put so us like, in categories say... with? That'd be an incredible uh, she, she, <laughs> well, yeah. you, so, you said so no. 309 you said the only the only team within the last say 100 years <laughs> to do that was the 1998 yankees and they had 309 and you're saying we're gonna have 350 that was a terrible calculation you just did there i you? i was looking at a bunch of numbers and i just took the average from here so it wasn't really why don't you just make it easy on yourself it and say they'll, be, they'll be the number one here you go yeah, let's let's do this three, for reference. Three six uh, four sixty. Yeah. This what were get... the old one Mariners? Here's here's some reference that we can actually use. Last year the number one team was the Dodgers at two seventy eight. The year yeah. before, uh, that's twenty twenty. Don't count that. Twenty nineteen two seventy nine was the Astros. Twenty eighteen two seventy Astros. Two seventeen two fifty one. So three fifty would put us a hundred runs better than any team in the last like five years. Yep. And that is I that what you're predicting? <laughs> I, would say, I, would, <laughs> I would venture to say that 300 is even a piping hot take. I'll say, three, I'll, I'll, say I'll, I'll say 300. 350 was a joke because I wasn't I didn't read anything. Uh, 300 well, it wasn't a joke, but it's a joke now because <laughs> well, it, it was. It was realize a, how dumb it was. Well, it was a, it was a take that I had didn't look anything up from, so it was a stupid whatever. I'll say yeah. 300. I'll, I'll stand by 300. Under. If we're setting yeah. the over under, I'm going to take the under as well. I think that I mean the set number one is inflated after a 17 point win, 17 run win. I don't know if you want to call that inflated because I mean it just. I mean how I mean not in, not only just that win, didn't we outscore like almost 30 to five or something? What the Cubs? The, that whole series. Yeah. I Here's think what it was like 25 to five. That Here's happen. what I will say. I will say I think that we. In I don't know what era that is like the the modern era is that what they call the it? live ball era the live ball era when does that start I don't know after the twenties okay I I think that wait after the what nineteen twenties dead ball era was around okay. the nineteen twenties I I think in recent memory I think we're the last fuck those names that you were saying the last couple of years the, the leaders I think we're going to be higher than them I think three hundreds might be a tall task but in the in the two nineties Anything goes. I think that happens. I would just say that they would probably be somewhere around the 270s, 280s, like all these other really great teams of the why last five the, years. Why not be the best? So They're gonna be I would the love best. to be the best. Yeah, that was that was a uh, a bit of a pussy mentality there, Chandler. We're breaking yeah, all these records. You think that's what they're all we're all getting broken. What if this team broke like every let's record set, let's, ever? Wait, let's, <laughs> set, let's set an over under on how many, whether it be individual or team records that this team breaks it like realistic do you think it's over under like two and a half under that, i think i think that's a fair over under i think it's gonna be two the way they're they're pacing to break like they're talked about breaking every record out there so you know there's the one that we've been talking about that was the overall team wins there's one that we we're talking about the judge 
hitting 61 home runs plus breaking Roger Maris' record. There's, there's a lot that are being talked about, and there's some that we don't even know yet. There's some that we just hear about a new one every day. I think over under one and a half, let's call it. I'll take the I'll, over I'll that. I'll take the over on that, yeah. I think it's going to be exactly two. Of team records, which two? And No, not even team records. Or just just rec- records, oh. whether it be team or... It's gonna be uh, most wins of all time, and bre- and Judge breaks. You really think we're gonna get over one sixteen? Nestor Cortez is gonna beat the strikeout record of two forty eight. He's like not even leading the strikeout. The strikeouts in the league right now, but he doesn't have to be. He's, well, he's not two forty eight. Isn't he's so. not leading the team either? Whatever. Currently, I'm just saying. If you're well, I mean, I was it. mainly just making a joke, but that's yeah. right. I, yeah, not whatever, man. Whatever. Chandler, you were very excited about your running third. What was it? Oh, I'm, I'm excited. It's not really a positive one, but I think it's something <laughs> that needs to be addressed, and I think that it'll at least open uh, the talk, you know, discussions amongst the four of us and hopefully to the millions of listener- listeners worldwide. Um, <laughs> uh, my rounding third is that Aaron Judge – not Aaron Judge, Jesus Christ, man, figure it out – that Garrett Cole – is not going to return to like absolute dominance this year, which it's, I don't mean, I don't know. I'm not saying he's going to be bad, but let's put a number on it. Let's say, I don't think he'll finish top five in Cy Young, which is for him a bad year. I think he's just going to be good. Not great. The rest of the year. Gut feeling or. I mean, he's had blow up. He's had a bad start. He had to the season and then he, you know, kind of got back to being dominant really good and then against the twins he went two innings gave up seven runs five home runs a career high he's setting a lot of career highs this year he's got career highs of walks in an inning like walks in a game home runs in a game runs given up in a game shortest innings gone in a game i don't know i don't know i think he'll be good i don't think that he's going to give up seven runs every time but i think that it's not crazy to think that you know He's just not going to be this top two, top three pitcher in the world this year. I disagree, but I can't say that I'm not concerned about that seven run. I know it's one game, but like. I'm not saying like I'm scared that that he's going to suck ass. I just don't like, I think not top five in Cy Young is not just like outlandish. I know know it's not outlandish. I I personally think he will, but I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you that. I think that I'm not worried. I, I think the the one thing I want to lean into is that seven run outing that we touched on. I don't like it, and I don't like it for the reasons that are obvious. But I also think that it can bleed into a game like a playoff. I'm seeing that in terms of a playoff lens, and I'm looking at that as like if you can give up seven runs. Who did he play? And the give twins. Up seven runs? twins. Twins have a pretty good offense. I think they're a little bit fool's gold in terms of you know leading your in a shitty division like that it's not really you're not really that good of a team but i think you know i i don't like it and i think that that's a bad sign for a playoff series i think because that if you can do that on one given day then you can do it on another given day it's like seven runs is not just like a, oh you know he had a bad start like that's blowing up and continuing to like snowball in one game and that's not good so i don't like it but i think i don't know i'm concerned um that didn't for an individual game, but what do you? I, think? I I do think that he will be top five, but I think I'm I'm I don't like that he showed this vulnerability. If that makes sense, I don't think he's going to do that every day. No, not at all. Neither I, do actually, I. But I, th- I think that he'll finish in in the top five. But I think that on a per game basis, the fact that he showed this crack is not good to me. I'll say this: um, we've been talking about it quite a bit about Garrett Cole's slow start. And coming back and, like, what do we need to see from him to make us feel confident again? And we all keep talking about that fuck you, Ray, the fuck you start against the Rays. And that fuck you start against the Rays is tomorrow. <laughs> that's that's what, it is, that's what it was supposed to be. We're playing the Rays tomorrow. Right. Garrett Cole starting. That's like, this is, like, the game we were kind of been leading up to in terms of, like, when Garrett Cole is going to be back. And... I, uh, you know, if he doesn't have a good game tomorrow, then I am going to buy that take, Chandler. Okay. That he's not going to be top five because that's that's where I start to get really worried about what's going on with I just, him. I mean, you know, we're a third good. of the way through the season. 
He's got an ERA in the upper threes, which, you know, you, you have that rule, you know, once you get a third in, you can kind of start to look at cumulative stats. And I know ERA is not everything, and it doesn't factor in all the stats in the entire world. It's not the best indicator, but your $324 million lockdown ace that's supposed to be top, you know, two, three in the world at his job shouldn't have a high three ZRA. That just shouldn't happen. You shouldn't. Like, I don't know. That's what I'm saying as far as concern goes. I still think, like I said, I can't harp on it enough that I think he's still going to be good, and I think that he's still going to go through dominant stretches. But I think that there's kind of cracks in his armor this year. You know, maybe I imagine he'll figure them out going forward. I still think that spider tech narrative is stupid and honestly pretty dead after last year and what he did after it. Did it help him? Absolutely. But I still think he can be a great dominant pitcher without it. And I think that he will get back on track as far as this this isn't a career defining thing for him. I think next year that's very likely that it'll come. He's still throwing a hundred miles an hour. He's averaging, you know, top, three, four, five in the entire Major League Baseball and velocity. He's still got the movement on his pitches, everything like that. There's just something. Even when he went through his dominant stretch this year of four or five games, there's just something a little off. Everything just seems a tick off, and I don't know what it is, and I can't point it out. Obviously, that's why I'm sitting here talking about it on the fucking couch and not in Tampa right now, but everything this year just seems a little bit off. I, I mean, when you look back to his last eight starts before that one, with the exception of one, every single one was a quality start, and he, there have been great quality starts, not only quality starts. Like I mean, I'm looking back at his game log, 6.2, no runs. I mean, it's, well, 6.2, no runs, six innings, no runs, 6.1, one run, 6.1, three runs, it's still a quality start, seven innings, two runs, eight innings, five runs, that's the one exception I was talking about, Six innings, one run, and then seven innings, no runs. That was the one that was nearly a perfect game. And then he had the 2.1 and seven earned. Like, that's – we're not – I don't think we're having the conversation if he's back or not. He's been back. I think it's yeah. – it's he's, th- th- that's a ridiculous stretch of games. Like, he's – and that's why his ERA is mid threes, 3.63 right now because he just gave up seven. Like, it's, it's going to be inflated right now. But, like, Gerkel's back. I don't know why you guys are even talking about the fact that he's not – it's eight games in a row – of just that's dominance aside from one i know it's dominance i never say he's not dominant i never say he's not back all i said was that i think that damon did i said i think that these blow-ups are becoming not frequent but they're happening more than they should to uh, enough to a point to where it'll drive him uh, a cy young especially and you saw last year and I'll just use last year as an example. It's a more of a, what have you done for me lately? And if he has a blow up start like that, if he has those here and there throughout the season, it'll keep some of those baseline numbers inflated. And then if he has one in September or something, that might be the final straw. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, again, I've repeated this multiple times. I do not think that this is any indication of how he is as a pitcher as a whole. And I still think he'll have a good season, but I don't think he's going to have a, historic dominant season that we were all expecting and hoping for coming into it. They was going to run away with the Cy Young and all that. I think, I think he's going to be good. Not great. No, I was more so talking to Damon who just said that he did. He was looking for that. Fuck you star, which I think he's already had it for seven and out of the last eight. One thing before I let you go, Murph is that I do agree after this blow up start consecutively, he's going to be facing the Rays, Toronto, and then Houston. Uh, that is going to, that's going to be we're, we're going to see we're going to see if he's going to let this snowball into multiple bad starts because now he's he is who he is he's a great fucking pitcher he's really good he's going against three of the best offenses in baseball so they'll figure it out and it's, it's tough coming off a bad one like that but that's that's what awesome. i'm looking for i'm not looking for him to be the bounce back yet he did it already he's he's been, he's showed that he's garrett cole's here this season it's can he recover from this against three of the best offenses? And we know he can recover from it because he's, he's Garrett Cole. I mean, he, he's been one of the most dominant pitchers in baseball for the last five years, and there's no debate about it. I, was it a blow-up start? Yes. I think we're overreacting a little bit to one bad start. If you don't have it that day, you don't have it that day. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. But interestingly enough, I was looking. So I was thinking that he might not be a top five Cy Young guy, but that doesn't mean he's not good. That's how I was going to approach this. And, um, you know, 
I looked up just AL Cy Young. I was looking for the odds on it just to see who else is up there and who could bump him out of the top five. ESPN does this Cy Young predictor, which do with that what you will. I don't really think ESPN is the this best. This is one that had like Clay Holmes as the favorite. Clay Holmes is second. Yeah. So like out of the top, out of the top 10, sorry, the Yankees have five of the top 10 in the AL, which like, yeah, don't want to look too deeply into it, but like he still, he could have not the best rest of the season and not the best meaning like still better than most and still could be in the top five. Cy Young, because you're looking at the other Cy Young candidates I mean, that are McClanahan. not Yankees, right? I'm thinking McClanahan, Verlander, the Valdez kid from Houston, and Manoa. Those are like the only really contenders that aren't. You don't think series. Nestor? Obviously, that Nestor's up there that aren't in the Yankees. Obviously, okay. Nestor's up there. I don't think Clay Holmes is realistically going to get a top five Cy Young just because he's a reliever. Not that he doesn't deserve it. Gosman, yes, certainly up there. Bieber, um, he's won one already. He's out. Yeah, sub three RA. He's striking people out. There's just I don't know. I'm not saying it's no, gonna I, happen. I'm just saying that it would not. Like I'm I don't know. He, he's showing cracks in his armor, and he kind of has. I'll say this: I don't buy the sticky tack shit as that or spider tack, whatever the fuck. That that was a contribute. Like I don't think that this is just the end of his career. Is that he can't use it anymore, and that like people are acting. I will say he's more susceptible to the blow-up starts, and I actually am slightly concerned about, for the first time in my life, I've been concerned about Cole between the ears, and I saw that not last game. I saw it in the Rays game because he didn't get a call that would have ended the inning, and he let that snowball into the game-tying run. He walked a guy on a 3-2 pitch that was a borderline strike, threw a little bit of a hissy fit, walked the next guy on four pitches, then gave up a single. Like, he was clearly rattled, and stuff like that, little things like that. Uh, yeah, it was a great game, and you look at the stat sheet, and obviously that doesn't show up in the stat sheet. He went seven innings, gave up a run, and, like, three or four hits. Amazing start. Definitely pads the stats. Stuff like that scares me. I've never worried about Garrett Cole between the ears. Stuff like that is just not like him, and it's weird. That, and that's kind of what I was alluding to when I say there's something that's a tick off, and it's not like last year. He walks a guy on a pitch like that. He comes back with a fuck you one hundred and one mile an hour pitch, dotting the black. He wasn't even close on the batter after that. He's I I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just don't have that same warm fuzzy whenever some little thing goes awry. Mm-hmm. You could yeah. That's that's. There's your, anybody that's that can opinion, come back yeah. from that though. I'm not saying yeah. he can't come back from it. I think you, yeah. the, you're just missing no, the, the point there. You, is you, that you there's some? Feel, no, I'm not. Yeah. Feel, yeah. I, and I think way, that there's. Yeah. There's a legitimate chance that he's not going to be a top five in the Cy Young, and I'm completely okay with that so long as so he keeps keeps it as it, how it is. I mean, if he – I don't think he – you know, he doesn't have to drop off the face of the planet to not be a top five in the Cy Young voting. So, like, I don't think it's rid- ridiculous to say that he's not going to be in the top five, even if he doesn't have that fuck you start against the Rays. Because he could go out and shove against the Rays, you know, have a little bit of hiccup against the Blue Jays and then turn around and shove again against the Astros. And then what are we talking about? Because he's back to where he was. So I agree, Damon, that the fuck you start needs to happen. And I think no matter what happens in that Rays game tomorrow, if we reassess this on Tuesday night or Wednesday, it's going to be one way or the other. Like we're either going to be like, oh yeah, Chandler, you're absolutely right. Or, oh, that was ridiculous because he had his fuck you start. Yeah, It's going to be one. I have, I have three things on this. I have one... <laughs> I have 20, 20 I just, things on this real quick. I have three things, yeah. but they are quick. One, they're just more more so closing comments. Um, one, I think we have we have had Garrett Cole for a couple of years now, but I do think when even when you look at his historic year, that last year when he had 300-plus strikeouts with the Astros, you look at that and the, you, you see the final tally and the final stats, and I don't know off the top of my hand, but I absolutely guarantee there were starts like this built into that season. So – when you look at a, a player like that, we're, we're looking at him under a microscope and every little thing, like you said, Chandler, that one spot where he you know, didn't get a call and then that blow-up thing happened. We don't see that when we're looking at it from a third party or an uh, outside Astros fan perspective that season. I'm sure if you ask an Astros fan, they probably had situations like that and may have happened. That's one thing I think that we – that's that's one reason why I'm not going to like overreact to one start because – I guarantee every pitcher, no matter what, who it was, no one's perfect every single day. And I'm not saying I'm not asking him to be, and I'm not saying he have, ever has been. I'm just saying 
that's one reason why I'm not going to overreact to that. Two, I think a guy like Garrett Cole with the pedigree that he has, there's a reason why he gives up seven in that spot and not just four is because you're that you're you're Garrett Cole, so you're going to be left in longer. So I think that's why he's going to have a little bit less of a leash because, you know, another guy, a random guy, I don't even know, want to bring up a name, but like Clark Schmidt. Clark Schmidt goes in there. Clark Schmidt isn't great, but if Clark Schmidt gives up four, he's getting pulled. I'm right or wrong. Yeah, Garrett but, but Garrett Cole's just... going to stay in there and be able to work a little longer. That's why, I'm, yes, you didn't have it. I mean, is, is seven should... runs still working through something, or is that just just like what? No, is that? I'm just, I'm I'm only I'm I'm not saying he had it that day. He didn't have it. I'm saying the reason why it's seven is because he was left in longer than another person. So it, it everyone else would have been. So he had a chance to be terrible for longer. Yeah, I'm all, the only reason why I, I'm once again telling you that he did not have it. He looked awful that day. I'm just saying the reason why it blows up to seven is because he's left in longer because he's Garrett Cole. Yeah, but those, but so. those are the games I'm like that like are worrisome. Like, yeah, we've, seven, we've all set our set our piece. I'm just I'm yeah, just no, I'm just uh, yeah. That that's the only reason I'm saying that. It's like, you know, five runs against the Orioles that one day too. Like that's a game you should throw. Like you should have three hits the whole game. Like. That like that those are the kinds of games where you should just the Tigers. dominate them. The Tigers. Like the twins are good, but you know, I don't know. I'm just saying like uh again, to Murph's point, like if he doesn't finish top five, like who gives a shit? Like he's yeah. still had a great he still has having a great year, but I think that like dominant ace Cy Young winner, like front runner, I need to see more to like be more confident in that that take i think yep. he's still there i think that right there was the perfect way to wrap it up there's no like that's all i was getting at is that i'm not confident that he's gonna run away with the cy young like people think he's going to and like again if he finishes six in cy young that's not the end of the world look at the competition that pitching across the al is fantastic this year and as we all know through the first couple of months offense was down as a whole anyway and pitching is up and stats are were inflated and that is what it is it's fine and I don't care if he finishes sixth. I don't care if he finishes tenth. Like, like Reese Bobby, you know? Hell, Ricky, you can finish <laughs> second. You can even finish third. Ricky, I was high on Peyote when I said that. <laughs> I'd be pissed if he finished tenth. I just paid him. All, I don't we care. paid him all loads so of money the, if, because that bleep. Because well, it's not about it, the Cy Young to me. That's what I'm saying. It's a. It's about the stats were and what you did to get there. There. Oh, what, if, what if four guys above him are on the Yankees that's the only reason I brought up oh, this I don't care thing just, earlier you paid him this much to be that guy if your stats aren't good enough to be top 10 then it's not about the award at all yeah but if you I'm, win who gives a fuck if we win a world Game series if we, if we win a world oh, yeah. series and he finishes 25th in Cy Young like you you're not gonna be like oh that Garrett Cole contract is terrible I'm Especially not, when he shows up in the postseason. I'm not yeah. worried about the contract. I'm not worried about him going forward or, you know, saying this is a bad contract. All I'm saying is that at, at this specific year, I just don't – I just don't know. I don't know if I'm confident that he's going to rebound and just – I know he'll rebound and be good. I'm saying I don't know that he'll just be able to lock it down for the entire season. I think this year in particular – in particular, maybe he's working through new things. Maybe it's the adding the cutter to the arsenal and he's still figuring out how to pitch with that extra pitch. Whatever it is that's maybe like a tick off, he'll he'll finish like sixth or seventh, and that's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. I don't care. Time will tell. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, want to do some uh, – You want to do some higher some, knots from the fans? Yeah. You sure. got him up? Luke got him up? Who's got him up? It's all you, brother. All right. You're you're the you're the guy. I will. Let's see. Somebody say something while I'm doing looking them up. I'm just looking at the schedule right now, and we got some some big make or break season make or break games coming up. Luckily, make we have break. a lead, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. It's not make or break, but yes, I mean, no, it, I mean, we could like run away with like officially run away with it. We have the Rays, Blue Jays, Rays. We have some pressure testing that will be going on, but we're eight and a half up in. Our division, we're f- aren't we five and a half? <laughs> we're five and yes. a half up on the MLB lead. Like, I know, well, but this is not. <laughs> I, I agree. I know what you meant. Make or break was not the word <laughs> to use. Let's let's just say who's ready for hot take s- number sustain one. Sustain or bury. Yes, yes, sure. Luke will have a full grown mustache before IKF hits a home run. <laughs> 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 I'll buy that. I, oh, I I don't. Here's the thing. A little bit about me. Um, 
don't really do that well. So I, exactly I with IKF. I don't even, yeah. No, but I'm I'm <laughs> saying I, I I think both scenarios. This is a very good comparison because you give me enough time, I don't think I'll hit a home run. You give IKF enough time, I don't think he'll. I mean, you give me enough time, I won't grow a mustache. You give him enough time, I don't think he's going to hit a home run. So, I mean, if we're comparing the two. Will I ever grow a home run, and will he ever hit a home run? Dude, ever, you gotta a, figure it out ever, over there. Will I ever grow, grow a mustache? A, grow a home run. It's, yes, it's, it's, there it is. My brain's in different places, but Frank Schwindel throws a perfect game before either of those happen. I think that was fucked up. I don't want a mustache, so that says more on you. I um, guess I, I I have to abstain from this one. I have to abstain from this one. So yeah, up to you guys. Like, I don't want one anyway. That's how that sounded. That yeah. wasn't. Uh, I don't want a million dollars anyway. <laughs> Wait, so he more said money, more that, problems, bitch. Was it a question or did he have a take that we're buying and selling? That was the a, take. That was that the take. Grow. Is did that, he choose one? That you will grow a full mustache okay. before I care if it's home run. Yeah, I can't believe it's home run first. Mm, I think? don't know. Yes. I think if Luke tried, he could do it. Before. I mean, no. he's got until October. I can grow one. It's just not going to look good. I can do it. <laughs> it's just gonna be it's gonna be scrappy it's gonna be like it's the like, it's like matt it's carpenter the, it's the matt carpenter of mustaches all right not nope. not to be confused with his mustache which is a nice one but yeah, like the, him that was a bad he, comparison it's gonna be no who, who he embodies i know what you want yeah, yeah. <laughs> like hard working nascar driver yeah. right. <laughs> glaber finishes the season with 30 home runs yeah i'll buy it all i'll right. buy that got, he has 13 right now yeah he's awesome yep sure if, we, if you want to talk pacing, I, I think, and which I think he continues, he's not, he hasn't had a, a rate where he was just like hitting a million home runs. I think he's just been slowly, yeah, quietly adding crushing. home runs to his timeline. He's, he's on pace for like 28. It's pretty good. No, Seems no. like his home runs yeah. go up more often than not, or like to right center, I'd say. Not yeah. like he's squeaking short porch home runs, but like I feel like every time I'm seeing him go yard, it's to he right hits center. He bombs, I don't yeah. Know why. I think that's the best indication that he's back offensively is that he's hitting those to right center. Because when he was sucking ass, he was trying to pull everything and just hit towering home runs to the left. So, I don't know. That's so all I'll say. That I, I think he, he's I think taking what it. they give him. And he's, his batting average is one of the better ones on the team, too. It's like 260 range. So that's that's not far off from where I want him to be. Like if he if he finishes the year at 275 batting average, that's ridiculous. That's great. Yep. Buying so. Miguel Castro as a high leverage reliever. I'm almost yeah. there. I'm close. Do no, it for like another couple of weeks, and I'm there. Mm. Dude's nasty. His command stays, yeah, his stuff's there. He's so it, nasty. It, it, if he, he has, has command, command right now, and yeah. if he keeps it, then he's great. It's Does he have if. control though? It's a big if. Yeah, he does. He had one that he kind of looked shaky uh, like a month ago, but he's rebounded nicely. So, I don't know. I, I'm like three good outings away from fully being on board, but I'm leaning towards yes. Yeah. Every time we mention either command or control, I'm going to ask if the other exists. <laughs> yeah, that area. won't get old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joey Gallo will have the biggest home run of the postseason. Wow, that's good. That's a good one. That, that's, that's a, a one. fun one. That's, a fun that's right one. on brand with what we were talking about, yeah. too. I'm going to say no because of Matt Carpenter. But otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Second, I, I, second I really, Yeah, so you guys know my answer. I, I, My rounding third was that Matt Carpenter would be the guy. So I, I do. I could see it, though. I could see it. Not being the best, but being yeah. a huge home run. Mm-hmm. Maybe, Ooh, this maybe he has the second and third biggest home runs. Yeah. This one we might have to uh, – actually open up for a little bit of discussion oh hello aiden big big fan um aaron boone is the yankees manager for the next seven plus years after this year we were way too harsh going into the offseason i don't think so i don't think the yankees are gonna have a manager for 10 plus years whether it's because he gets fired or because he leaves like yeah the, i don't the, know like change is inevitable and there will be a time where the yankees need to change the whole well, system up. Rephrase it this way, that we were too harsh on Aaron Boone. He'll end up being yes. here longer than we expected. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, he already, he already is here longer than we expected, so we didn't expect him. You to know what I mean, long. though, not Yes, like... yes. I think for, at least for the next four years, but like you just said and you alluded to, like the manager is kind of just a, a patsy. Like they, they just – they throw the manager under the bus for whenever something goes wrong. And that's that's the case not only with the Yankees, with every team ever in any sport ever. 
I mean, uh, you look, look at what just happened to Madden. I was about to say, I was about literally about to say that, and also, uh, I mean, not to, it's not in baseball, but Chandler, Florida State head coach, was you guys had Jimbo? a great se- you had a great season. Florida State baseball head coach, they had a great season. They just didn't make the College World Series, and he got tossed. So, four straight uh, underperforming years, though. That's, okay. There's an expectation well, in Tallahassee, <laughs> brother. They, I, I honestly do. I think we dismiss that a little too quickly, though, because, you know, it's a big assumption. But, you know, if there's three World Series in the next seven years, he's going to be around for all of them, I think. But, you know, a lot can change between now and then. And we don't even know how this season's going to shake out. It's not even the All-Star break go. yet. And we don't know what's coming up. We don't know what's going to happen. We have no idea. And yeah, if I do once something do. goes wrong, though, he – He'd be the first we'll guy. Will be to blame. And I, I do want to give him a ton of credit, too, because this team seemingly ran it back. Same players, same everything. And he's, you got to give him a ton of credit as to why this is happening the way it is. You look at another – this is perfect to talk about, too, because we look at other teams, and we've always talked about this every year on the podcast, every other team and how they manage situations and pinch hit. And we've always said that Boone has never done that well, and guys like Alex Cora and A.J. Hinch, although they cheated, they were good managers and, and uh, just – all these other managers can seemingly make the decisions, the right decisions in the moment. Kevin Cash too. I mean, pinch hitting Jose Trevino there. That's perfect. Like that's a spot. Then he walks it off. Like that is something that we didn't think that Boone had in his, in his toolkit before. And like, obviously a lot of the pitching stuff goes to Matt Blake and he's probably covering up a lot of the blemishes that existed before. And that's obviously trickling back up to Boone. But you know, I think a lot of credit needs to be given to, Boone and yes, I think we were a little too harsh on him. So I I think I'll, it depends. As long as as long as this team keeps winning, and if if we're truly in a window where we're going to be this good for a while, if we this is a lot of factors that come into that. Is Aaron Judge going to stay? All that stuff. But it depends on the team. But if we continue to to keep this squad together and inject the right youth and maintain this window, I think that he's he's going to be at the forefront. Volpe replaces IKF. Nope. Yeah, next year maybe. Next when? Year. This year? Yeah. This one says by the All Star break, but I'll extend it. No. 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 Volpe's not going to be up for the next three seasons. Maybe he's turned it around, but I don't even think Volpe's having a great year. No, he's had a good like two weeks, but he was playing really bad before that. Yeah. Um, da, 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 let's see. Is it just me or does he look a little pudgy? Volpe? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe the the minor league money is getting to him. He's yeah, the minor league, league money he signed for what, like five million dollars? Oh my god, you're acting like that's not a lot. Like, <laughs> what are we- no, you said the minor league money. Like he's not gonna, like he can't afford to eat. No, I'm saying that he's eating too much. Oh, I thought you were saying like the minor league money he's eating. He's having a poor diet, like just no. eating like mac and cheese because that's all he can afford. No, he's right. eating. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on. <laughs> growing a mustache would fix all of Garrett Cole's problems. Absolutely, I agree. Yep, I can agree. I Especially think... if he turns a little mullet in with it, be cool. That would actually yeah, be sweet. That... I'm gonna Photoshop that. I was just about to say we should do that. <laughs> Marwin Gonzalez that gets sent down. Marwin? Why? Mm, Why? Well, maybe it's just, just read the things. Just, no, maybe who the hell's, We need it's a backup just, shortstop. Does Carpenter? eat away i mean what if what if you go get ben attendee at the deadline you still have to keep marlin because unless you're going to move glaber over to shortstop when ikf's not playing there's nobody else that can play shortstop and i don't think you can mess with glaber right now so no i i honestly and this might be a hot take too i'm pretty sure that carpenter's gone before marlin strictly for that reason if that happens if there's a shift if there's a move whatever carpenter's gone before marlin Unless we bring in a shortstop, but yeah. yeah, agree. He's too valuable, and like just like plays everywhere, lefty bat. Not gonna happen, Bucky. I wish Oswald Cabrera, whatever, is doing better. Oswaldo, Oswaldo, no, Cabrera's Oswaldo. the one that's closer. Yeah. Are you talking about Peraza? No, I'm talking about Cabrera, the oh, one Cabrera. that almost made the team out of camp. Yeah, no. I wish he was doing better in the minors. I think he's struggling. Which, because I think if he was doing better, he would end up taking Marwin's spot, and that wouldn't be that crazy of a take. Yeah, I'd agree. Got any more? No, that's pretty much it. 
right. a lot of them were a lot of repeat ones. You know, like we're gonna win 120 games. Judge is gonna hit 63 home runs. Like Chapman needs to be put down. Like, you know, a lot of the same. <laughs> the, the general stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, same old, same old. All right. All right. Well, that, that I think, unless we have anything else we want to chat about, I think that's it from me, from everybody. As always, we appreciate you guys listening and uh, happy you spent some of your day with us. We love chatting it up. And we've done this 207 times, and we hope to do it 207 more times. And <laughs> you guys you guys are the reason, not only 207, more than that. You guys are the reason why we do this. Love you guys. Um, as always, if you could leave us a five-star review on iTunes, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, just scroll down, Market 5, dude. Um, go subscribe to the Bronx Pinstripes YouTube. Go download the Underdog app to get a free $100, and go download the chalkboard group chat also in the description for the podcast and go buy some tickets on tick pick or tic tac like damon said before so the rebranding uh, I'm, the, I'm, I'm headed to branding <laughs> put it in there <laughs> put it in the suggestion box all right catch you guys later